I mean, so rather than have open mic, you're free to ask me any question. Now, I want you to know that, because I remember the last time I did this, somebody, I was asked something, and I said I didn't know, and the gentleman just went into an opera. I'm not, <laughs> I, 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 it's only God that knows everything. So if you ask, and I, and I say that I don't know, I don't want you to take it otherwise. If I don't know, I don't know. I'm not one of those who come to public and talk about things. You see, even when I do my analysis, if it's a legal thing, I'll tell you, the lawyers can handle this. If it's economic, I say, the, 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 the economists can handle this. So, it, so it's like it's a kind of open mic, but what it just means is that um, I'll be reacting rather than people just phoning in, phoning in, phoning in, phoning in. I'll be reacting. Per, so we're going to do it like this. When you call in, you have one minute. And I will I will spend one minute or two minutes. This is I'm the this is the time for nepotism. Since it's my show, I can take two minutes. You take one. <laughs> Morning, Risi. How are you? you? Look quite well. You look dandy. Mm. Thank you, Okijimi. Mm. Good morning. You Good. look fine yourself too. It is a lie. I don't have ah. the most, the most <laughs> Okijimi, I No, I like the shirt. Do you want it? You can have it. Mm. What will you wear home? Uh, I'll wear your blouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so we you so you 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 will open up our line zero seven hundred nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three and zero one four six five seven one nine zero. So it's like I said, it's a kind of open mic. And let's be fair to people. So don't spend time. Um this is a very serious I, I intend to take this program quite serious. A bit of banter in between, but it's not a time for fun, you know, this is, this is serious business. Because we need to get reactions of people to certain issues. And so it's a serious business. Don't just call me to crack up with me. That is not the mood we are in today. And let's keep to the one minute time so that we can allow some people call in. At least it's the least we can do in Nigeria. If we can't if we, you know, if things are so tough, at least let us express ourselves. I don't mean let us vent. Or like my good friend uh, Gawad said, let, let us para. No, 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 we're not going to para. So I'll take the first call for today. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir, Pastor Ladiko. This is Pastor Ladiko. Hello from Lico. Hmm. Uncle Jimmy, my question this morning. Yes. Is that uh, how long does it take for INE to organize a by election? Mm. For example, now we have the former speaker who yes. has now joined the executive, yes. we have the former senator because I call them former, they are no longer there. Yes, the former governor of uh, what is his name, where Boni State, mm. that has now become is a uh, part of the executive, a minister. And mm -hmm. their positions are still vacant in their constituency. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take for INEC to conduct a by-election in those constituencies mm -hmm. to fill those places? Thank you. Uh, okay, all right. I, I, I don't know if there is any specifics as to how long it takes to conduct a by-election because... Don't forget, it would have become, it would have been a surprise to them, just like it was to, to, to like it is to, like it was to us. I mean, uh, so you already had somebody who was in reps, uh, and then got, you know, appointed the chief of uh, staff, and so I, we don't know what time he formally wrote INEC. You, you know, it, it's, it's quite government things. You already take some paperwork. And I and, and do take some time. But there's been campaigning. And this in Suleri, my constituency, where um, Baja, and the same would apply to the other gentleman. He said, in my constituency, I've seen people com uh, campaigning. And so I think it will happen any time from now. Uh, but I think that is at the front burner of, that's at the back burner of the political problems that face us today. You know, we have, this country is on heat at the moment. Politically, socially, economically, he's on serious heat. Uh, so they'll take their time, and I'm sure it will be done within the split time. I honestly don't know. Uh, okay, another. Let's take another one. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, 
Good morning, Mr. You know, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Yeah, I am Michael calling from Ecuador. Yes. I just simply want to ask, why is it difficult for us to do themselves? You want to ask why is it difficult for Africans to rule themselves? To rule themselves. Oh, right. Oh, 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 okay. How, okay. Why, how is it difficult for, for democracy to work in Nigeria? Work. Okay, that's good. Thank right. you very much. Uh, the thing, the first part of my answer is this: this whole thing is a bit alien to us. It's like when you want to wear borrowed clothes, no matter how nice it is, you feel uncomfortable when you're in them. I don't know if it happens to you. And so it's it's alien to us. And we had a social revolution around 85, where the real political, the politicians who practice democracy know about it. Um, in spite of their fallings at that time, in spite of their failures, um, you know, were taken over by the military. So by the time the military got back, right about by the time they were back, right about 85, they brought their friends, they brought their contractors, they brought their all kinds of drug run, brought all kinds of people, because we will not, we will not lose, uh, we will not take our eyes off the ball, to the fact that quite a number of our politicians, uh, quote and unquote, are people of interest, if you know what that means, you know, quite a lot. So these were the ones, the contractors. Everybody was afraid that time. The real politicians were afraid, and then. These so-called people of interest now stepped in, and you can see where we are today. And that's what it's like almost top to bottom. You know, I mean, you have a political class where people lie about their age, lie about their schools, lie. He did youth call, he didn't do youth call, he went to this school, he didn't go to that school. That immediately tells you the pedigree of most of these people. And then we are cramped. Because we have a lot of people of questionable character uh, he cheated when he was. Uh, he stole this money. He cheated. Uh, the, the, oh, he stole money here. He was forgiven and all these kind of things. You have, you know, quite a large number of people of questionable character playing the leading role. So that's what it is. Um, that's what it is. And of course, there's a cultural side of things where one of our biggest problems is that the African man just lacks identity, but that is changing now. I mean, you can see what happens in other African countries, what the French are doing, and so on and so forth. It just defies common sense. You know, so all this, most of these people of questionable character, when they grab power, they grab power for themselves. And um, in a situation where, when it's time to cast a vote, you're ready to work. Well, see, it's a game plan. They impoverish you, and then give you money, and then they stay in power. The next election you are going to have, you will see what will happen. The rate at which we are going. People will come to politicians and say, just give me this money, I will vote for you. It, it will be the other way around. But we hope so someday somebody will break the cycle. That is our hope. If the cycle, is, if there's been an attempt to break cycles in other countries, we hope that somebody will break this cycle. Now, I'm not referring to change of government or anything. Just a new culture. Just a new culture. The other day, I was, I was um, you know, listening to one of the, I think the guy who might be the next president of Senegal. It was a delight to hear him speak. It was a delight. Extremely intelligent. Look at the president of Kenya. You know, these, at least from their rhetoric alone, and, and what looks like sincerity of purpose, you know that they want to lead their country somewhere. Surely, God will provide such a person for us in this country. Do I hear an amen? Ah, Omodikines, you didn't say amen. I said amen. No. You, like, you amen. Who is seeing you that waving your hat? Amen. Amen. You have gone to, you've gone to uh, night vigil, gone to this and that. Your voice is gone. Eh? Jesus. <laughs> your voice is gone completely. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's pick another one. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Uncle Jimmy, good morning, sir. Morning, Chris. How are you? Fine, sir. My open mic. I neck this morning at the news complaining about uh, insecurity during the election of a uh, do and on those state, right? Mm. Uncle Jimmy, with what happened on uh, January, uh, February 25th, 
mm. and March, the tribunal did not see all the wrongdoing in that election. Mm. Did they see anything wrong about that? With Okujimi, over 30 people died for this election. And the court, the judges did not see anything wrong. So I neck, I said it, as far as they scale through with this, it has come to stay. Uncle Jimmy, your prayer, I pray, will make we live long to see when those good set of people with good will rule this country. Thank well, you, Uncle Jimmy. Yeah, there's always time for a miracle. At least that's what we are told in church. But, uh, 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 you know, on the serious note, I don't particularly blame the judges. Rather, we should be blaming those who set up these laws to create openings for themselves. That's what it is. Because what we are told is that judges, you know, take their decisions based on what is presented before them. What I've been told is that what I've been told is that if you if you are driving if you're driving in front in, in traffic, you run a, a kid down deliberately and the judge is you know is, is, is driving behind you and the case comes to him, he can't say in court that he saw what you were doing. That's the way it goes. So I, I think that it was those who put these things together in the very first instance have kept so many loopholes um, that um, it's almost becoming a farce. If I have no longer pay attention to anything tribunal legal because the laws in the first instance, like, like you rightly said, Chris, it's not the judge's job to to you know to to go find out. Who killed what? We should have had a body, an independent electoral body, maybe comprised of the three forces and the, the and maybe a magistrate or a judge, who would have just like we have the EFCC for economic crimes. We should have had a body for for political crimes. So whilst they are going to talk about cheating and whatever at the tribunal, the one for political crimes would have grabbed you immediately. Look at the crisis that happened. If, if if there's a fraud in a bank now, you immediately call in the EFCC. Maybe we should have that kind of system that says that immediately during, before, during, and after elections, there's an agency that is, claims to be independent. I don't know how we're going to do that. Maybe we'll import the, uh, we'll tell the Vatican to give us the man to head the agency. <laughs> or we have to go to Saudi Arabia to give us. Who would then would have moved in immediately after the Lagos crisis? Would have the power to prosecute anybody, including the traditional rulers who are doing oro and all this intimidation? Maybe if we had something like that, but we won't have. We won't have. That, that's why I don't join in the argument for, for the, you, you say ah we should have a single, a single, um, a single assembly and so, on and so forth. Who is going to sit down and rule over that? Is the people that will be affected? So it's a very frustrating thing to live in this country, I must tell you. Mm, but live, we must live. Uh, so invariably, what is going to happen is, I don't think you'll see me around the next elections. I'll probably go on vacation. So it's such a frustrating, you, you, you know, you just feel like a castrated bull, you know, taken for the mating season and you've been castrated. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> do you get my example? Um, uh, because you were looking at me pitifully. I didn't say I was castrated. <laughs> I <laughs> just felt it was a little too... Pick, pick. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good afternoon from here, Uncle Jimmy. My own time is good afternoon. Oh, Jakarta. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Too. Uncle Jimmy, so I'm good, sir. So last week you had a guest and I enjoyed your conversation and chat. Uh, you guys were talking about um, Fela Kuti and the host of, I think, Fela Boration. And I'm on also Saturday. a Fela fan. And I... Yeah, that was on Saturday, yeah. Mm. And I'm also a fellow fan. And I really appreciate each time you make reference to him. But a question popped up in my head, and I was like, the man talked a lot about a lot of issues, about a lot of issues that are still prevalent still today. Mm. He even proffered solutions. So my question is, what happened that time, you guys' time? Was it that, was he cancelled in mm. a way or was he tagged so that people will not listen to him? Oh, this man is not, you know, a restaurant and don't pay attention to the, mm. you know, messages he's trying to pass. Or was it that you guys, the people didn't want to listen to him and that maybe things were much more better that time and they didn't mm. want to, like, pay attention to the major things that he was talking about? Because 
yes, you may say, what about us now that, you know, my generation is much more younger? Why didn't we take the message? But like you said, mm. then it was a boil. Now it's a cancer. Yeah. If you guys okay. would have, have done it, you know, by now we'll be here. That was yeah, okay. question. What happened to that time? I'll tell you. Um, first of all, um, of course, all of you know it's the celebration period. So we're in a kind of jubilant mode on that. One of the people who made me today, believe you me, is Fela Kuti. And um, if you look at, if you, you know, at that time Fela was seen as a rebel who couldn't do anything right. A lot of people were comfortable, relatively, so they didn't see the need for all the things he was saying. I, 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 and I, I look at it, I, I look at some of the ironies. Some of the people way back then that were pointing fingers at him, look the children they've left behind and look at fellow children that they've left be, that he's left behind and just sit back and compare. You know, you'd be proud to have any any of fellow children as your children. I'm saying that, including his his, his grandson. Um, so what happened? People, you know, first of all, life was a bit comfortable. And then, of, of course, people were looking at him instead of listening to him. You know, and that was also because, you see, when in our own time, people just, apart from those who listen to jazz, generally music must have a message. So people were more interested in dancing Miliki and enjoying themselves with Sonny and, and um, all, you know, other musicians like that. Um, the high life musicians too will talk about, oh, he stole my man, he stole my wife. He had all these social things. Fela was one of the very few people whose music had a message. As young as I was then, with the likes of Duby, Mevory, and Co., we had seen it. Um, Wale Shoyinkatu was a very strong influence. I was a member of the Paris Confraternity. And I know what we did at that time. You know, but people didn't see all that. I'm going to repeat for the umpteenth time, for anybody who hasn't heard, that the Paris Confraternity was largely, of course, what Literary Inca was and involved us for what you now see today as FRSC. Because I, I attended the convention in uh, 77 or 78. I think it was in Benin. And this issue, in fact, it was what Literary Inca that started, you know, I think it was voluntary then with the Bola Yiledun, Deji Shachekmo, you know, Chuck Mike, you know, doing the Ibadoife, just to, voluntarily, just to stop deaths. And then Balaigi invited him, and the rest is history. So it was no surprise that um, Walesha Inka was then made the first whatever. If you if you notice, I don't know what it is now that there's so much hunger. For a very long time, you'd hardly find FRLC people arrest you and collect money. And that was because majority of the initial heads the departmental heads were all members of the conference who had those principles. We wouldn't take money. You wouldn't. By the way, if you call down the they really have That'd be your sense of opinion. I don't like I was the people to lights off the ball. It's very clear. The was all of uh, Gadifa way back then. You know, we had strong students' union leaders, okay, whoa. but we were all looked at as rascals. We looked at rascals and rebels. Okay, so see where we are now. We were absolutely right. I used to write clubs uh, uh, in Vanguard, my columns, and um, was in the world and the first of the around. Uh, just also would call me. Uh, just <laughs> but we have been. And Nigeria should not be very like you said, Nigeria. Some of us are still at it. I can't do otherwise. That's good. And I initially, when I started, I was looking for a photo and I just started them. So, come uh, Let's do our time for one. I've got a break. When we come back, we'll continue. Okay? We'll be right. <laughs> We put good fight for sense and matter to you. There's some religious reasons who do not do the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And I think they have the right. They have no hope for not to stop the joke. But when we say our shoulder too high, they say make we lower our chest. <laughs> <laughs> what why we put like a on our goal like that day? Oh gosh, my day. You get the problem. They call us big tender. They follow us. I get a credit that takes target every day. Not off now. They do.
Than those carriers are being delayed every day. Dear me, let me talk like this. Who doesn't want an extra stream of income? But I'm still looking for better trading conditions and terms. Fast execution of account and processing of the excess money from your account. Guys, I said eight FM fast. Better execution of your account and terms. Switch to eight FM today for your ultra fast execution. One to two thousand levels, price spreads, swap free, and more. Your money still goes out. Wait, so I just trust the position with browser. Kafka. I said eight FM. Yes, welcome back uh, to the Daily Digest with uh, Jimmy Disu. And I want to do a shout out for one of my people in Benin um, who listen, you know, every day, all the way in Benin. I know the man in Indonesia, no, no vex. <laughs> and there's Kemi Ajayi and there's uh, my good friend Omasa. I hope he gets to get this message uh, to Omasa, uh, you know, and Kemi Ajayi and all of them in Benin there. Just to give a shout out to them. Right. So uh, let's let's pick the next one, please. Hello, morning. Hello, good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is Kingsley. Yeah. Uh, okay, Jimmy. Uh, I'm very worried because the next next election that would happen. Yes. I don't know how it's going to be because. If uh, anything people are doing today, they don't think about future. Couldn't be you. You don't think that if there is next election, there will be violence so that so that people will like to grab and run with it. <laughs> and if, I, I'm afraid, uh, Uncle Jimmy. Okay, let me predict. I'm, let me predict. Let me predict what will happen. There are two things that are likely to happen anyway. The first is that if we continue along this trajectory, our people will be calling for change from deep within them. It it will fall with hunger and more determination. And I hope that's what it is. On the other hand, I hope it doesn't bring about apathy. You know, because um in this it's not so much the way the result turned out. I, I hope people will understand that. I had somebody accusing me the other day that I'm I'm an obedient. 
Um, I, I made myself very, very clear in that last election. For, I didn't support the aspiration of the current president. And I have no regrets for not... For not I have no regrets for taking that position. But journalism has gone beyond... You will be fair, yes, but sometimes when your country is up to it, is when, when your country is going through... Uh, because the... the uh, uh, what's his name now? Buhari's government. The results weren't too pleasant. So when your country is going through something like that and, you know, you shape public opinion, you, you, you can at least show some direction. And I didn't believe that was the best place to go. Um, and, and I still don't believe so. I mean, so it's not a matter of some infantile thing that he hates him, he does this. No, there were parameters that we saw. And wait and see what's going to unfold eventually. The parameters and things that we saw that made us say that Nigeria could, I suppose, for example, at the primaries in my heart, I just wished that somebody like Oshibajo would get the APC tickets. And somehow I believe that, given his calm and exp his calm disposition and exposure, you know, he probably would have done the better job of what we have now. Because the truth must be told. Whether anybody likes it or not, the truth just must be told. So, because you ask yourself questions, where are we at home? Where are we abroad? Where is Nigeria on the world map? And the the recent the recent uh, 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 United Nations um, uh, annual meeting that, that took place, if you are somebody who is very very discerning, should give you an idea of where we are. This is not a matter of um, this is not a matter of patriotism or whatever. It's reality. I don't owe anybody loyalty. I owe my country loyalty and my people, and I stand by that. Um, you know. So, so uh, essentially, I just hope that that you, you know maybe by the next election a few things would have been corrected. Definitely, we need to correct our electoral laws. I mean, come on, how can we say in a country like Nigeria that oh, if you have school sets, minimum of school sets, you can come and run the country? We need to have stringent, stringent, uh, um, um, whatever, because democracy is not about just fair to, free and fair to all. It's not just free to all, but also you must have parameters. If a man cannot run a, a, a simple multinational, why would you want to give him a country to run? Look at presidents. You look at presidents at the at the United Nations. You heard some presidents speak, and I leave you. I leave you to judgment. Those who you thought, uh, 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 you know, spoke well, or, or, or those who you know who were struggling to even put their ideas forward, and you could see the audience reaction. Not to talk of the a, a lot of uh, hyping and whatever that we got from there. That turned out turned out to be, um, you, you know. So I'm hoping that maybe that hunger would push people to say that. You know, and I'm hoping that we do need electoral reforms. We can't continue with what we have now. We are not talking of the constitution. We are talking of electoral reforms. And we need tighter laws for INEC. Tighter laws for INEC. We do need that. But that's a story for another. Another day. I'll take the next turn. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, morning. Oh, could you mean good morning? Morning. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Yes. This market woman. Yeah. Uh, my question this morning starts. Why we Nigeria, we know they live. Yeah. So what is going on since all these years? You know, I love Fela so much, so much that no weekend I will not go to Shirai. Yeah. No weekend I will not go there because of that truth. And because of that truth, he has been speaking for all those years. That is why when I see those set of people in that corridor of our this thing, I refuse to vote for any one of them. Because what he said, it was truth. Why can't we learn 
till today. Okay, if you collect something from this politician, how long will it take for all those things to finish? That you will not think about your children, you will not think about all that. You will just want your country to go down. How long, sir, these people will continue to put this country like this? Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I mean, that was a comment, really. So I agree with almost everything that you have said. So I can move on to the next one. Hello, good morning. 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 Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Mm. Good morning, Mr. Boyeva. Yes. I just watched um, some of the callers. You say, um, <laughs> don't you think, already, looking at what happened on the last election, don't you think people will be, the youth and the general public will be very, very like a difficult, both in Lagos and other places, will be very, very like a difficult in coming out to, to vote. Because they will, they will say, they may say, whether you vote or not, your local government must, must be there, your chairman must be there, your governor must be there, your president must be there, whether you like it or not. After voting, after, after, after vote, they say it's a, uh, uh, they will just pick any person they like. Mm. You understand? Don't you think like that? And what way I would be in this country? Okay, thank you. I didn't quite understand. I didn't quite understand what what you were trying to say. But what I do know is that the death of um, what's this gentleman? Mobad. Death of uh, what's Mobad. It? Mobad. Yes, the death of Mobad has opened my eyes to something else, and that is called youth power, which the government should not test. If the government, you know, when you, unfortunately, you can't advise politicians. They always tell you that, oh, you're not a politician. You don't know, the, you know, and people around them who do know. I've been around politicians before, so I know, I know the kind of vibes. You are always negative. Oh, you don't know anything. You're not a politician. We are the one who's close to the, to the, you say you are close to the, to the uh, grassroots. And these people always come for a loaf of bread. They don't. They hardly ever come on their own. These are people that you buy anytime you want to have a rally. You 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 pay money to come, and you say you are close to the grassroots. But anybody that has a reading of that has a reading, of, you know, of, of 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 the political situation in our country, would have learned a lesson from what you saw in 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 in, 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 in uh, when this gentleman died and the response that you got. What it shows, and I hope it doesn't happen, what it shows is that the youth without prodding can decide certain things impulsively. I was praying, for example, when they were having all these uh, walks and so on and so forth, mass of people, that nobody died from any police bullet or anything. It would have been a different situation we are talking about. Remember that the Arab Spring started from somebody who out of frustration burnt himself. The rest is history. So we need to be careful. We tell these people, we keep telling them over and over again, and they think that they can continue to ride roughshod uh, uh, over the rest of the country because they are in charge. One day, Monkey go go, it go go market, and I will come back. That's all I'll say. Hello. Hello, guys. Good morning. Morning. Yes, I'm not talking about election now. What I really need, Mahmoud has played me while you. He has, I don't know about it. He has played me while you. And they must give me a bit of threat. And he declared the election for the pocket. He has played me while you. And Jimmy, this, I've been following his track from the days of uh, your, or your former station. Now, I'm going to pray for you this morning because you are standing for the truth. Now, I thought you are a big brother to uh, Buhari before, but you are standing for God bless you, sir. I'm not a full name, and I can have his brother. No, I thought you take uh, this where, where uh, your, is it, what, what is the name of this envelope? Where, where, what I read there, fellow, you didn't collect anything. God will bless you. <laughs> I'm going to explain me why you. I can't if I I'm going to come up for Come up, come up, I'm going to come up for road. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I don't blame you. Uh, you know, if uh, you remember the railway people who came here 
We want ta ta ten thousand naira. You know, I don't blame you because to be honest with you, you know, just like in every other profession too, uh, you know, some of our colleagues they don't follow our hand. And you can, you can. And the funny thing about the media is, you can, if you are discerning, you will see it. If a man has been compromised, you will see it. You don't need to go far. You will see it. The man has been compromised. Yes, I supported Buhari initially. Uh, because I got a wrong reading, and I must say I got a wrong reading. I thought it was the Buhari of '94. Was it '94? Buhari of '84, rather. Um, uh, Buhari was my hero in '84 when he came in, but apparently everything now shows that it's most likely that Idi Agbon was the man who was driving the trailer and not uh, Buhari. Yes, initially I supported him heavily. I I am not afraid to take a position. And if he's gone wrong, I'm not afraid to admit. I admit that following Buhari or, you know, making him your hero was the wrongest thing you could ever do. It was eight years of nothing. Nepotism, name it. And this road we are going now, if care is not taken, if it ever gets to eight, well, four years initially, it might end up being four years of nothing. Because because it's not it's not a matter of it's not my portion. Uh, we, we should put, look up to God. I'm not looking up to God. God has created me. I pray for him, for his guardians. But, I, but we are doing the wrong things. One of the reasons why people have to keep going to church and, and this is because they don't have sincerity of purpose. They don't have, I had somebody yesterday. Now it's a good time for me to comment. Uh, she said, ah, I used to do traditional law, but now I'm going to church because church teaches you how to forgive. It's a lie. Let me tell you what it is. Uh, people run away from traditional, uh, 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 traditional uh, uh, religions mainly because it is unforgiving and because but you would have been warned. When they tell you, don't put your leg here. If you put it, but we like to go to a place where they say all is forgiving. And somebody has died for your sins and you, commit, you continue to commit that sin. Ah, don't, don't try me this morning, no. We need we need to do some some deep thinking. If we if if we had, I'm just saying, uh, of course we don't have one one uh, uh, a traditional religion. We have many, but if we are stuck to our old religions, where you come to the open square and swear in front of a Ha or any other whatever to say this job that I'm going to do, I'm not going to chop money inside. But this one that you chop money first, you take the money, go build cathedral. You take the rest. I, I read one 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 woman in uh, was it Zimbabwe or so. She stole. She she works in an airport. She stole X amount in millions of dollars. She found it. Then the first thing she did was to pay tithes on, on on what she stole, thinking I don't even know if our people understand who or what God is. I don't think we'll ever stop. We go to. We, even those, a lot of those preach themselves don't know what they're saying. I'm sorry to say. Because you need to sit down and think. I'm a Christian, no? Don't, I don't, so don't, don't say I'm a Christian. And I, I'm deeper than most people think. Because going to church doesn't make you a complete Christian. And it's God, if God didn't want me to think, he won't give me this brain. So let's, let's get that very, very clear. I'm a Christian and I come from a Muslim family. So I'm totally, and some of my best friends, are traditional worshippers. And I find them more sincere than some of my other friends. We need to we need to open up our eyes and tell us for as long as we all live in deceit. In deceit and, 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 and we close our eyes to the truth, we are not going anywhere. Is there anything I have not said? Answer now. Talk to the mic. I'm You said everything, everything. Everything. Do you agree right. with me? Yes, completely. Completely. I say it is. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I buy you lunch. Yeah. <laughs> is boy Liane well? No, I oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Oh, could you mean, uh, my name is George. I'm calling from Lagos Island. Yes. How uh, could you mind take this morning? Um, I don't know this morning. You heard that uh, one of the newspapers say gas is going to be one thousand naira, one thousand five. 
if time did not take, I think from now to January or December. Is so, that, all this is... Hello? You said that gas is what? No, I see one of the newspapers this morning, the two people, yes. did, you and Sheriff did not go there. Mm. That uh, if time did not take, that we in Nigeria we buy gas at the rate of 1,005. Mm. So, my, the thing is giving me concern, the way things are going, on, going up this um, in Nigeria today. Okay. Everything is going up. So yes. my concern is that... Hello? I'm listening to you. My concern is that, is it the driver that's driving the motor does not know the road? Does it mean that the motor is not good? Thank you and God bless you. Oh, no, it's not. It, well, the, the, motor is, the motor is okay. Now, Tokumbo is small, but it's okay. You know, everything there. He's using the wrong maps. <laughs> he, he's supposed to go, be going to Benin, but he's going to Republic of Benin. So we don't almost reach Ajashen now. <laughs> so we are headed in the wrong direction. And, and you can see, and we, we cannot run away from we cannot run away from the fact that a lot of things are being done impulsively. There is no clear plan as we speak. There is no clear plan that to, you, you know, every day is bad news. You know, your your, your rate is skyrocketing. Uh, at some point you, you can't do some international trade. At a time when you should be building your home base, you are concentrating on bringing foreign investment. I don't know where have that fixation fixation come, came from. And in trying to build, bring foreign investment, you are doing everything, all things possible to make it easy for them, but difficult for your people. What we should be doing now is concentrating. We can trade amongst ourselves. We need to build our home base. Well, what for, which for all you get is briefcase, briefcase buccaneers. Come and swipe whatever they can swipe. You're trying to bring your currency down so that you can bring in foreign investors. I don't think that's the way it works, but I'm not an economist. So I'm just giving my opinion. Remember that I tell you that I'm not always right. These programs that we do are just to stimulate your thinking. But my thinking tells me that I'd rather concentrate on, you know, supplying the basics that make people thrive better. Light, what, especially light. Okay, now there's no light you want to bring foreign investors. Your barbers, your, your vulcanizers, all these people, they can't operate. You say you're bringing in foreign, in foreign investors. How many of them will come? I, and I can't, I don't remember who, who I saw it. I think it was okay, so maybe it was who said that. Look, you take care of your home first. The foreign investors will come on their own. The world is a global village. Okay, so this one that we went, India and uh, United Nations, how many foreign investors did we see? What we got, we, we are not even sure now. The credibility of what we were told, we need to question it. Because the one from UAE, we got a completely wrong thing. It's all just, it's all just, um, it's a pity. It's not because uh, I've been issue, I, I didn't support, the, the, you know, who the party put forward. And it wasn't a matter of support. I did an analysis and I said to myself, if this man is in the driver's seat, we're not going anywhere. Time will come. The next four weeks or so are going to be very, very, they'll be exciting for those of us in the, in, in, you know, in the news area, but they could be traumatic for us as a country. Just wait and see. It's a pity. It's a pity. Maybe it's a cleansing process for us. After we've suffered up to a point, we will learn our lessons. And then that phrase that I love so much will prop up never again. You know, when the people are determined and they all say never again, it means that they've, they've learned a lesson. Okay, 9.51, I've got to wrap up because What's Up Lagos will be coming in in the next two, three minutes. It's been exciting talking to you. Um, it's loads of responses. My, my phone, it keeps, you know, I, I usually keep my phone on and, and it's always on my back. It's been vibrating all, all the people sending in. Look at the calls are all coming in. We'll most likely do this again, okay, um, in the near future. Who knows? We might jolly well do it next week. Tomorrow I have a very young lady. She's just about 21. Tomorrow is like youth day, okay, and she'll be here. And I haven't wrapped up properly what we are going to do on Saturday. But it will be something exciting. You can trust me on that. So I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, Lizzie, thank you very, very much for being here. You're welcome. Uh, how is the dickiness? She's fine. Do you She's always well. tell do you tell her that I'm always asking of her? She she always she li she listens. She now listens. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> dickiness. They should be praying for us. So. Uh, but tell, 
But tell the deaconess is not just prayer. Mm. Our, 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 our pastors and so on and so forth should be telling us realistic things. Tough. They shouldn't be telling us. Uh, we should be telling when we are praying for our leaders. We should first of all pray in the first instance for God to give us a, a good leader before you can pray for a good leader. Before you can pray for a leader, tell the deaconess that. True. Very, yeah. very important. I will relay the message. Well, the, our pastors have some of them have fallen our hand, you know, in the path along to where oh, it will be good. And uh, God told me this, God told me that. You, we need to inspire people, tell them the truth. Those of them who are not that knowledgeable, and let people have an open mind. I, mean, I think I should say, mm -hmm. if, uh, if you if I become a pastor, you'll be the yayad. <laughs> uh, in waiting because you are too young to be yeah yeah Jesus. you'll be there uh, you will be there in waiting till we have and uh, yeah 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 no <laughs> <laughs> okay what do you know how to say what's up Lagos let me try you what's up Lagos one two three what's up Lagos I ah, know it's not like that at all we don't rush in all cash in no all we don't cash. need to shout second attempt. Uh, yeah. Ah, try it. Uncle Jimmy, you try your own first attempt. Ah, no, now. Baba, baba, is dead. I, I never drink ogi. Eh, now you're putting Ritchie on the hot seat. It's not oh, yeah, fair. Oh, yeah, try it. Oh, quickly. What's up, Lagos? That's what's coming next. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>